President Donald Trump has been given a full state welcome to Beijing, the most important stop on his five-nation tour of Asia. Our next guest says the visit comes with China, not the United States, the most powerful actor in the global economy. Let's get to Da Nang, where APEC CEO, the APEC CEO summit is taking place. And joining us from there is the Eurasia Group founder and president, Ian Bremner. Uh, Ian, thank you for joining us. Why do you say that? Sure. Uh, why, I, I'm sorry, there's a lot of ambient noise here. Why did I say what? That China, and not the United States, uh, is the most important actor me? on the global economy. Yes, well, certainly. I mean, as a government, uh, the Chinese economy is only about 60 percent the size of the U.S. economy, so America uh, clearly is more important. Uh, but uh, the U.S. and the way it projects strength uh, is very much about the private sector, where the Chinese government owns the most important corporations. They're writing very big checks. They're not uh, moving away from multilateral institutions. They're actually creating their own architecture, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, uh, One Belt, One Road. And so if you are uh, a country sitting Sitting on the sidelines here at the APEC, and you're wondering whether the Chinese government or the American government has more impact on you economically, it's not even close. It's clearly China. And I think that's something the Americans need to hear, especially because, you know, China, Xi Jinping gave this extraordinary speech two weeks ago saying that China is now prepared to be a global superpower. That made news for exactly two hours in the United States. The U.S. is focused, of course, on Trump, Trump, Trump all the time, and they're not paying attention to the fact that the world order is shifting. Um, you know, sort of while uh, uh, while we're chatting. Well, absolutely. You described um, in Tokyo, I believe, uh, the U.S. president as uh, the quote the weakest leader in modern history, and the Chinese president Xi Jinping as the strongest. Is it all down to leadership? Because much deeper than that. Yes. No, no, no. As I just mentioned to you, a lot of it is structure. It's the fact that the Chinese, you know, have strong industrial policy. Uh, the Chinese are a state capitalist system. Uh, for, for decades, we've been presuming that as China got wealthier, they were going to need to politically reform. That's clearly not the case today. Xi Jinping is not only not politically reforming, but Chinese leadership is much stronger today than it has been at any point since Mao, while the United States is much more deeply uh, divided. Uh, and we see that in terms of Congress. Congress. We see that in, in terms of the civil wars within the Democratic and the Republican Party. But yes, part of it is leadership. The fact that Donald Trump is a particularly weak leader, his popularity is particularly low. I mean, even a strong leader in the United States isn't able to do all that much. Uh, and, and a lot of that is the checks and balances of the American political system. But a weaker leader um, that is talking about America first, which makes sense for Trump's base, but internationally, it goes over very badly with most of America. American allies in the world, not all, not Japan, not Saudi Arabia, but most. And it certainly provides a lot of space for America's antagonists to do more, a vacuum that they can play in that they didn't really have before. And, and Xi Jinping and the Chinese are clearly head and shoulders above everyone else in recognizing that and in taking advantage of it. Yeah, Ian, you know, going into this crucial meeting, we had uh, President Trump tweeting, congratulating President Xi on his political victory, which is an interesting interpretation of what the 19th Party Congress was actually all about. And, you know, on the other side, we're hearing that in Beijing, some of the top kind of dignitaries understand the need for tweetable deliverables from this meeting. So is it fair to say that perhaps Beijing has a better understanding of how things are working, of the situation in Washington than vice versa? because it's not clear that the Trump administration has a coherent foreign policy. Look, I mean, I, I think that there are things that the Chinese very much like about the Trump administration. They love the fact that human rights is no longer really an issue, uh, that they're getting criticized by the American president. They like the American president is very transactional in terms of deal making. That's been historically a much more Chinese uh, approach. What they don't like is the uncertainty. They don't like the fact that they're not certain um, about how much trouble Trump might cause, both in terms of the U.S.-China trade relationship directly, but also greater possibility that 
North Korea could become conflagration. Um, and, and so uh, clearly what the Chinese want to do is they, they want to make Trump feel good in a relatively costless way. So give him all of the pomp and circumstance, throw a great party for him, show of incredible respect. You're so wonderful, Mr. Trump. You're, you are truly the greatest. You are making America great again. In the same way the Chinese have done with Putin, who, I mean, frankly, when you talk to the Chinese pri privately, they don't feel very strongly about Putin. They think that Russia is a country in decline. But, but they think it's very easy for them to you know, sort of just give them, make them feel good, as opposed to try to undermine them by saying, hey, you don't really matter. That was something Obama wasn't very good about. You remember Obama said Putin's a, you know, a not very important and Russia's a country in decline. Didn't score any points that way, right? The Chinese are pretty good at that. Trump could probably learn a couple uh, pages from the Chinese manual on that issue. But let's be clear, the best meeting that Trump has had so far, his most successful since he's become president on the foreign policy agenda, was when he invited Xi Jinping to Mar-a-Lago. That went well. And from what I'm seeing so far, I think that's going to be reciprocated in the Beijing trip. It may not be sustainable for four years. I don't think it is. But for now, it appears pretty stable. And so far, Trump's trip to Asia has been a success.